It's time to jump in the mud and take a hands-on approach to studying the circle of life as a student of Witherbloom College. In this video, I'm dropping a Witherbloom-inspired build that will have you up in the fray, powered by insects and the forces of life and death. Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player-focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Before jumping into the build, let's take a look at my character build guidelines. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10, as most campaigns are played in this level range. The goal of the build will be to fulfill the concept, but also be viable for combat and roleplay. I will be covering the features in race, class, and background choices that make the build possible. And finally, ability scores will not be defined as each table decides how ability scores are calculated. Instead, I will provide a ranking as to which ability scores you should prioritize for the build. Students at Witherbloom College take up studies trying to understand the forces that govern life and death. Witherbloom students come to value the circle of life, often training to become alchemists, herbalists, doctors, farmers, or chefs. For this build's concept, we will take inspiration from the card art for Witherbloom Pledge Mage from Magic the Gathering to play as a tree folk druid that uses a physical form, connection to insects and other pests, and nature magic to be a guardian of life and death. Tree folk are not a playable option found in any of the official 5th edition books. While Tasha's provides a way to play any racial option you could dream of with the origin variant rule, there aren't any available feats that help reflect traits of a person made of wood. With a simple reflavor of an Eberron race, we can be a tree folk. For this build's race, I went with the Warforge, reflavored as a tree folk, as its racial traits allow us to portray a living tree person. The most notable traits for this build are Constructed Resilience and Integrated Protection. Constructed Resilience provides a flavor to have us feel like a sentient tree, providing us advantage against being poisoned and resistance to poison damage. Integrated Protection is key, providing a plus one bonus to our armor class, which will be integral to our survivability and necessary to this build's playstyle. For this build's class, we're going to multi-class. We will be taking a small dip into Monk to pick up unarmored defense to help with our defenses. The Monk dip represents our tree folk character's attunement with the natural elements and our physical vigor. A bulk of this build will be made up of the Druid class with a subclass being Circle of Spores. As a Witherbloom mage, the spores could be just as they are described in the subclass, or if you want to play into the lore a little bit more, the spores that you emit from your body are pests, a collection of insects or other unfavorable critters that you have taken to nurture to harness their life force. The background for this character is taking inspiration from the card art featuring Witherbloom characters. Much of the card art features students crafting potions or training in alchemy, so I'm going with Guild Artisan as it gives us access to an herbalism kit if we take up trade with a guild that is made up of alchemists and apothecaries. The guild could be a special club of Witherbloom students or Witherbloom College itself. With our classes and subclass giving us the ability to stay in the middle of the fray, our in-combat role will be a frontliner, but with the amount of spells at our disposal, we can switch to a support role when needed. Out of combat, we are a solid troubleshooter, leveraging our spells to help us overcome exploration challenges. Now for our ability scores. Prioritize Dexterity to boost our armor class and weapon attack bonus. Next is Wisdom to support our spell attack and spell save DC, followed by Constitution for some decent hit points. Then choose between Intelligence or Strength. Intelligence will support some of our skill choices, while Strength is a flavor choice that plays into the Lubbering Brute trope. Whichever you don't pick, make it your fifth choice. And finally, Charisma is our dump stat. Taking a look at our skills. The Guild Artisan background is going to give us proficiency in Insight and Persuasion. Insight could be our ability to clue in on another creature's emotions, stemming from our study and understanding of the life cycle. Persuasion can also be tied to your studies of the life cycle. You are more empathetic to the living, understanding that life is short, looking to create a more peaceful environment. Choosing the Warforge, our race gives us the option to choose a skill of our choice, and reflavoring the race option as a tree folk, it seems fitting I go with the nature skill. Our knowledge of nature not only reflects our studies at Witherbloom College, but also reflects our natural connection to it. As a first level monk, I chose History and Stealth. History could reflect more of our studies at Strixhaven, reflecting our understanding of events that have occurred in different environments. Stealth could represent our natural camouflage. Now let's get into a level by level breakdown. Starting at level 1, we will be taking a single level dip into Monk. As a monk, we pick up our class proficiencies, unarmored defense, and martial arts features. We are proficient with simple weapons, short swords, an artisan tool or musical instrument of our choice, and for this I went with alchemist supplies as another way to show our major as a Witherbloom student. For our saving throws, we are proficient with strength and dexterity. Unarmored defense is reflavored as our character's natural defenses, being made up of iron-like wood. It's not a perfect translation as admittedly it's a bit of a flavor miss as it has no correlation to constitution or strength, but it does solve a defensive weakness found in the Spore Druid subclass we will receive in later levels. Martial arts will allow us to use our dexterity in place of strength for our melee attacks. Again, I admit this is a mechanical solution to help with our viability being a Spore Druid. With level 2, we are going all in on the druid from here on out. We receive some druid proficiencies, know how to speak, read, and write the druidic language, and can cast spells. 
For our druid proficiencies, we pick up light and medium armor and shields, but for this build, they aren't relevant. Witherbloom students focus on the natural world, being empowered by magic that governs the life cycle. With this in mind, the spells for this build will put an emphasis on manipulating the forces of life and death, but it won't be a comprehensive list. Here are my suggestions for cantrips and first level spells. Druidcraft as a flavorful utility cantrip that connects this character to nature. Guidance, Infestation, a damage cantrip that could be us unleashing pests onto our enemies. Mending, Mold Earth, Poison Spray, Thorn Whip, Absorb Elements, Animal Friendship, Cure Wounds, Entangle, Good Berry, Purify Food and Drink, and Speak with Animals. At level 3 we receive the Wild Shape feature as well as pick up our subclass the Circle of Spores, which gives us an expanded spell list, the Halo of Spores and Symbiotic Entity features. The expanded spell list from our subclass gives us the Chill Touch Cantrip and several other spells that I will mention as we level into the class. Halo of Spores allows us to use our reaction to deal additional necrotic damage if a hostile creature gets within 10 feet of us. Just like with the Infestation Cantrip, Halo of Spores could be us commanding a small group of pests to attack our enemies. Symbiotic Entity uses our Wild Shape to grant us scaling temporary hit points and adds 1d6 necrotic damage to our melee attacks. This feature represents our ability to manipulate the forces of life and death to boost our defenses and inflict pain on our enemies. Next at level 4 we can cast second level spells and here are my suggestions. Blindness Deafness, Dark Vision, Earthbind, Enlarge Reduce, Gentle Reposed, Hold Person, Locate Animals and Plants, Pass Without Trace, Protection from Poison, and Spike Growth. For level 5 we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat and I went with the feat choosing Magic Initiate and picking the Wizard class. Magic Initiate will let us pick up two cantrips and a first level spell from the Wizard spell list and I went with Light, Booming Blade, and Shield. Shield will come in clutch increasing our survivability. At this level, Booming Blade will be our main attack option, increasing the damage output of our single attack. With level 6 we can cast 3rd level spells and here are my suggestions. Animate Dead, Aura of Vitality, Erupting Earth, Gaseous Form, Meld into Stone, Plant Growth, Revivify, and Speak with Animals. When we hit level 7 we gain the Fungal Infestation feature, allowing us to use our reaction to raise the body of an enemy that had just dropped to 0 hit points to be used as our zombie pawn. At level 8 we can cast 4th level spells and here are my suggestions. Blight, Confusion, Freedom of Movement, Giant Insect, Grasping Vine, and Guardian of Nature. Hitting level 9 we gain an improvement to our wild shape and the option between an ability score increase or a feat. At this level I picked another feat choosing Warcaster as it will help us maintain concentration of our spells since we will be in melee combat and importantly be able to use our reaction to use a spell for an opportunity attack. And finally for level 10 we can cast 5th level spells and here are my suggestions. Cloud Kill, Commune with Nature, Contagion, Greater Restoration, Insect Plague, and Mass Cure Wounds. Now let's take a look at the build's pros and cons. For our pros. We have a better survivability than most, unarmored defense boosting our armor class, the temporary hit points granted from symbiotic entity, and the shield spell from magic initiate go a long way of keeping us in the fight. Despite being geared to be in the frontliner role, we still have a high level of role flexibility due to our ability to cast spells. We could switch to a support role to buff or heal our allies, or drop a crowd control spell to eat up the enemy's action economy. For our cons, our symbiotic form is tied to having the temporary hit points received from the subclass. As soon as we lose them all, the damage buff provided to our melee damage and Halo of Spores is no longer active. This build may have too many options to use for our reaction. Halo of Spores, Fungal Infestation, and being able to use a spell when taking an attack of opportunity does overload our reaction. Have a plan each round to help mitigate this. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of Witherbloom student would you make? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out more character builds, I have a playlist just for you. You can click on the thumbnail on the screen or a link in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.